Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. God is going to hear the cry of somebody today. And then what did he do? He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. I believe that passage is written for me. If it's written for you, let God hear you shout hallelujah. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. You know, there is something called fearful miracles. Somebody is going home tonight with fearful miracles. And the reason we've gathered tonight is, is that in the name that's above every other name, even if you are cursed, that curse is going to be changed to blessings. That's why the greatest prayer anybody can pray for you is to say, God bless you. And I want to say that one for free. God bless you. By saying God bless you, I'm saying, let all the forces in heaven, all the forces on earth, all the forces underneath the air, cooperate with you so that you will succeed. So I'm saying to somebody right now, God bless you. <laughs> now when you compare that to Genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 to 19, Genesis 3, 17 to 19, when God was cursing Adam, see what he said. He said the ground we walk against you. He said, instead of the ground producing good things, we produce thorns and tissues. He said, until you sweat heavily, no food. And he said, you, we depreciate so steadily until you finally die. That's a curse. Because he's saying, let all the forces in heaven, on earth, underneath the earth, walk against somebody so that he will never make it. I pray for someone tonight. Every curse upon your life shall be destroyed. So when you want to read, when you are looking for a copy or a sample of full-blown blessing, read Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to 13. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 13. It tells you what will happen when you are blessed. It says your body will cooperate. He says the ground will cooperate. He says your enemies will be taken care of. He said rain will cooperate. He said your competitors will be handled. Because that's why he said, oh, you're going to be head, you won't be tail. 
He said, you'll be, born, you'll be lending to a nation you won't borrow. He said, enemies that come against you one way, we flee seven ways. He said, the fruit of your body, the fruit of your ground, even your animals will be blessed. Any curse coming upon you from your forefathers, God will destroy today. But do you know one thing? There is somebody listening to me now. The coming year is when they are going to prosper the most. Why? Because they will be blessed. When you are blessed, while others may be suffering, you'll be blossoming. So the cursed person is like a man driving in the wrong direction and going at high speed. The leper goes steadily towards the grave. Whereas a blessed man will be going higher day by day as all the forces in heaven on earth and underneath the earth continue to support him, pushing him higher and higher. For example, Jacob, Genesis chapter 30, from verse 27 to 43. Genesis 30, 27 to 43. The Bible tells us that he just kept on increasing, increasing, increasing until he became exceedingly great. Exceedingly great. From tonight onward, in the name that's above every other name, that will be your testimony. <laughs> to move from being cursed to being blessed requires Tremendous amount of anointing to transform a life against whom all evil, all forces in heaven or not underneath the earth, a man that all forces are working against. To transform him to someone that all the forces now are helping. It takes a tremendous amount of anointing. Someone's discovered all of a sudden, where am I? And he saw, oh. I am in a horrible pit. I'm surrounded by Mary Clay. The more I try to get out, the deeper I sink. And that fellow cried to God. And God heard him and brought him out on where he can stand firm. And then as he began now to lift him higher, he began to sing a new song. Somebody will sing a new song here tonight. <laughs> Some of you will remember the story of a man. Very wealthy man. Who had 
a quarrel with his wife. And the wife happens to have <laughs> a little connection with the devil. So the wife pronounced a curse on him and told him, by the time I finish with you, you'll be trekking in Lagos. And the husband laughed. I thought it was a joke. Because at the time the wife was saying that, I think the man had about 14 cars. How can a man with 14 cars, good business, fat, uh, bank account become somebody who will trek. But the curse began to work. And one by one, one by one, one by one, the cars were sold. Money dried up until there remained only one car, one old car. And 50 cobble in the pocket of this man. At that time, 50 cobble was big money. <laughs> it would probably be about 500 naira or something today. <laughs> um, we've been witnessing to him. It's because there was plenty of money. He doesn't feel he needed Jesus. All of a sudden, God, in his infinite mercy, opened his inner eyes. And he said to him, sir, I have 50 cobble left, and I'm hungry. If I eat with this 50 cobble, I will have money to buy petrol for my car. Then I will trek, like my wife prophesied. If I use the money to buy petrol, what will I eat? That's when he drove to Ibutemeta, the headquarters of the church, and gave his life to Jesus Christ. The day he was sharing his testimony, he was dedicating two big houses, new, in the same Lagos. The tide turned. And the tide is going to turn for somebody today. You know, after tonight, by the time the Almighty God finishes with you, as we are entering the new year, you won't even remember that you had suffered before. God is going to anoint you. It will be a double portion kind of anointing. It will prepare you in readiness for tomorrow. Um, I've told you that the purpose of this particular Congress is to change you from receiving to becoming. Mm -hmm. You will receive freedom tonight. There'll be a, a new turn around for you tonight. And then by the time God has done what he wants to do tomorrow, you will become a blessing to others. Every curse will come to an end and blessing will take its place. So, I'm not begging you tonight to give your life to Jesus if you haven't done so. The choice is yours. Are you tired of curses? Would you rather move from curses to blessings? Are you tired of walking like an elephant and eating like an ant? Are you tired of 
all forces in heaven, on earth, everywhere, walking against you. And you want a situation where whatever you touch now will begin to prosper because God is now on your side. The choice is yours. So if you are here and you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, Jesus is crying now, who is on my side? Let him or her come unto me. So I'm going to count from one to ten. Those of you who want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ tonight, those of you who want to say, I don't want to have anything more with the devil, I don't want to have anything more to do with curses and all evil forces waging war against me, run forward. Before I say ten, come and stand before me here. And then we will pray for your salvation and we will continue with the rest of the program. So I'm counting now. One. Two. Now I know some of you are coming from afar, so you have to move a bit fast. Three. Four. Five. It is only Christ that can redeem you from curses. Come to him. Six. Seven. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Eight. Nine. Now, if you're on the way, just keep coming, keep coming. Make sure you get here before I finish praying. And those of us who are already in the front, cry to the Almighty God, tell him, please save my soul. Forgive all my sins. Let your blood wash away all my sins. And receive me into the family of God. And I will have nothing more to do with sin nothing more to do with the devil and I will do your will go ahead talk to the almighty God and please the rest of us can we intercede for these people let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them that the almighty God who saved our souls will save their own souls also let's, let's pray for them and counsel us please come very quickly to come and attend to these people. Go ahead, cry to God, ask him to be merciful unto you, ask him to save your soul, ask him to move you from the camp of the devil to the camp of the living God. Promise him from now on, he will be your Lord, he will be your savior, and you will serve him wholeheartedly for the rest of your life. Now hurry up, I can see, see one or two. See, just come in. Hurry up quickly. 
Come now. This is your day of salvation. Your day of deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for your word. I bless your holy name for the people who have responded to the altar call. Father, please remember your promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. I am asking, Lord God Almighty, that tonight you will receive these people. You will forgive them. You please save their souls. And let your blood wash them clean. And I pray, Lord, that they will now become members of the family of God. That they will never think of going back into the world. For the rest of their lives, Father, let them serve you. And I pray that every curse upon them will be destroyed tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. 